So we got a kick drum coming out of a uh, kick channel in the sound, and we've got a snare. And we're let's um, make this more like a, a house or an EDM uh, trance track. We got to add either hi hat or shaker um, to add to these parts. So probably the easiest way is to just duplicate a track. And so you can right click on that track and duplicate it. And then it's called snare by default. Let's call it hat. Change the name of this part to the hat part. And it's actually, instead of doing that, what we can do is um, just delete that. Just hit the delete key. And you notice like if your um, timeline has two bars and you double click in here, you're gonna get an empty two bar part. Now I'm working with the Groove Agent plugin, and you can see F sharp, F sharp one, and A sharp one are my hi hats that are built in here. Um, so there's a couple different ways we could record this in here, and this is maybe a good time to talk about quantization. Quantization shows up up here, and you have a bunch of presets, and this is one of the most powerful. Um, features of Cubase is their, their quantize panel. So if you if you open up the quantize panel, you, this, this is a whole separate discussion all about it. What quantizing does is it fixes you from being a bad performer, right? So let's say you're a drummer and you ever work with a sloppy drummer or your drummer has too many drinks at the bar and all of a sudden he starts playing all sloppy. Well, quantize is a way to um, basically turn your ro your drummer back into a robot, right? It's, it's going to fix everything and make it perfect, all fall exactly on the beat. So if you uh, turn quantizing off, you're just going to record exactly what's in the instrument or whatever you record, whether it's via your, uh, your MIDI drum kit or you're playing the keys on the piano that corresponds with these drum sounds. And you're going to do a reasonably okay job. And with quantization, you can actually make this um, automatically record in quantize. And you can set your grid, the swing factor, uh, the catch range, <coughs> which is how far away from the actual quantizing that you want to actually improve. Um, it's, it's basically with a bigger catch range, you'll be able to have more and more and more beer and the drunker you get you need to increase the catch range because you'll be more and more off the, from the beat where you actually wanted that that note to hit and then um, non quantize of zero ticks I, I almost never use this but essentially what this does is it makes it so that certain um, ticks are not certain notes are not going to be quantized and you can see here like if you, in other words, what this says is if you get within eight or 10 ticks of the actual beat, then leave it there. And it's a way to, even though it's quantized, if you get it close enough, then it'll leave it. And this, this is a way to leave a little bit of human feel into your recording, if you're recording live um, into MIDI. So you can mess around with these, um, play around. I usually run, um, zero ticks here I usually like a little bit of swing for most um, for most uh, house music um, techno is, is pretty much zero swing but um, with, with a lot of house music you have like anywhere from 13 to 25 28 percent swing um, and it basically is just shifting part of the notes you can actually see it shifting so it's, it's shifting the odd um, sorry the even beats closer to the next beat so it's interesting to see um, what swing actually does. Is it's, it's literally just pushing the even number, even numbered counts um, a little bit farther ahead in time. So usually this is about a good setting for this. And I'm, for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to record a uh, hi hat part just by um, just with the mouse. But I'm gonna do it in real time. We'll see. We'll see how far I get. And this is another good time to bring up. Um, pre-count so um, whoops it looks like my um, transport panel here came came um, came unglued you don't need the, the separate panel I just usually go with the one that's built in here um, but you can bring that up like that um, so I'm gonna go to the third measure here and you can see if I hit if I turn on record it just starts counting right away 
okay um, and if you open up the metronome setup that's where you have um, the number of counting bars so if I want to if I want a two bar count count and now it'll be like you know one two three four five six seven eight and then I start so usually I have a setup to click during count in and it can help as well until you have a decent drum part built in to leave that click on um, and in this case I don't need a MIDI click I just want audio click and um, you can change the click sound if you want but I usually just leave it default and then uh, this is gonna use my time signature and start counting uh, two, two bars ahead so one thing to point out about the groove agent is you may not realize um, it may, may be a little bit hard to hear but toward the top of the pad this is going to be max volume and to middle is like 50% volume and down here is like 10% volume so you can actually create a little bit of variation in the velocity just where you click on this pad all right so I'm going to hit record and it should I'm going to go back to bar three and I'm going to hit record and it's going to give me eight bars and then when I get those eight bars um, it should it's going to start recording and what I'm going to do is try to uh, move this around on my screen so you can kind of see what it's doing okay let's try that so I'm going to hit record and it's going to count eight bars and then I'm going to just record this part nothing happened why is that because this is not really a MIDI controller really what you need to do is you need to connect your MIDI controller and you need to send F sharp one now you might think if you I wonder if it'll read automation I don't think that works either let's try that you got eight counts all right so that didn't record either. So it's not about automation and it's not, this, this pad doesn't actually send MIDI data. Now I don't, I'm a little confused to be honest. I'm not sure why they don't make it do it that way. Um, I'm gonna close the quantize panel for now. We can always open that back up under um, MIDI. Uh, sorry, uh, where is it? Uh, quantize panel under edit. Um, it's also right here. Let me bring up the quantize panel. Um, so how do you get MIDI recorded in real time? I actually don't have my MIDI controller connected right now. So I think um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, ways of getting MIDI recorded in the next, in the next segment.